beautiful with honey hair who blended gentility and sensuality in performances with unexpected depth, as America's answer to Brigitte Bardot at one point. She was regarded by some as the lovely daughter of Frank Remick, proprietor of the former Remix department store. She is the attractive, brilliant lead in A Face in the Crowd, Days of Wine and Roses, and other movies for many more people here and worldwide. Because Remick was never simply another attractive actress, her reputation endures. The seductive blonde cheerleader, the troubled alcoholic wife in Days of Wine and Roses, the blind target of drug hunters in the Broadway adaptation of the thriller Wait Until Dark. Even though she considered herself shy, she took unconventional roles and made them her own. But her personal life raises many questions. She was never touched by scandal. Richard Burton was probably Hollywood's first emotional addict. He had many lovers and many affairs, including his relationship with Lee Remick. According to Lee Remick, Burton has a remarkable characteristic that gives ladies the impression that they are the only people in the world. This truly is a pleasure. Perhaps the most famous seducer of our time is Richard. He appears to be sexually indestructible and provides a satisfactory performance at any time, in any location, and regardless of the circumstances. Lee Remick had a really mature quality, therefore it is not surprising that Burton fell in love with her. That was not overshadowed by her beauty. Remick, who was frequently called honey-haired and likened to the graceful actress Grace Kelly, didn't seem destined for the movie industry. She enchanted Remick's clients when she was younger. She relocated to New York City with her mother when her parents were divorced, where she attended posh schools. She participated in chorus lines for musicals at the Hyannis Melody Tent one summer when she was a youngster. She was expelled from a girls' finishing school when she was 16 after landing a part in a short-lived Broadway production. After three months, she dropped out of Barnard College and began a career in live TV plays. Anthony Ritchie, a Quincy architect, recalled running into Remick at about that time while she was making one of her infrequent trips to her father's shop. Ritchie was not just awestruck by Remick's beauty, but also by the fact that she spent so much time speaking with the salespeople and clerks. Remick wed director William Colloran, then quickly divorced him in Mexico so she could wed director Kit Gowans. The incident was the closest Remick has ever been to a scandal. She was an outlier. She had a strong foundation when she entered the film industry, so she didn't believe the hype. She didn't need to hang out in Hollywood, because she had an agency on the West Coast. Click here to watch this video next!